Uh, people often describe, use the term compassionate use, but it's, it is not an official FDA term, although the FDA, dis, you, the FDA officials will use it. But um, it, basically what we're talking about in expanded access and in extension studies are uh, access for patients to receive investigational therapies that are outside of the main product development pathway. So if the main pathway is you go from phase one to two to three, or possibly combining some of those phases and you accomplish safety and dose ranging and then establish efficacy, sometimes uh, there's sufficient vector or drug available to offer this to other individuals where the child may have a, you know, a rapidly progressive condition. Now, expanded access uh, is given in, it, I, it is occasionally done in two different ways. One is with um, a single patient uh, or effectively single patient, which sometimes can be two or three, but a single patient um, uh, uh, application to the FDA, that's an expanded access uh, IND, or sometimes it's done in parallel as kind of an offshoot of a clinical trial. So it, it is, there's enough, you know, the, the drug company I, I will, when petitioned, make some of the drug or gene therapy available to individuals who are not qualifying or not participating in the phase one, two, or three trial, but who, where there's a desire to, uh, to give, give them access because they're, they're maybe rapidly progressive. Again, to try to, try to be, uh, be clear about this for, the, uh, for expanded access, where it's, you're going to have access to the investigational therapy that's not part of a phase one, two, three child. Usually, those only come on after phase one where there's information about the dose and some basic information about the safety. The, the only exception to that is that there have been cases of individual single patient uh, applications to the FDA, so-called single patient INDs. Uh, which are broadly considered within the, uh, within the expanded access uh, or compassionate use descriptor. Uh, but, uh, but most of the time, one's going to apply for expanded access after phase one and in a situation where, um, again, it's not a substitute for participating in phase two or three. It's, uh, it's really for patients who might benefit but don't fit into those trials.